In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear children, Jesus says, Be perfect, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Dear all, I welcome all of you to the second session of our first chapter, Vocation. Let me narrate you the background for current session. We learned that God created this world and its living creatures by saying a word. But God made mankind very special and distinct from all other creatures. How was it so special? Number one, God formed man by his own hands. Number two, God gifted him three things, God's image, God's likeness and God's own life. And number three, human person is composed of a physical body and a spiritual but a never dying soul. Yes dear children, a soul is a superb soul with special powers of memory, intellect and free will. Intellect helps man to recognize the voice of God. By his free will, man enjoys absolute freedom, a liberty to take right decisions. Man is the only creature who was called to live happily with God forever in heaven. Unfortunately, man abused his freedom and turned away from the love of God. As a result, man lost the greatest gift of God's life in him. However, our God is a merciful God. Therefore, he promised man a savior who will win back the God's life that was lost. So, this is the background. Now, today, we will see more about God's invitation, God's vocation. God invites each and every one of us, just like Henry in our story, for recreating the kingdom of God. How do we do this? Well, we read in Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 that Jesus wants us to be perfect. Perfect like God. God is perfect means God lacks nothing. God is holy means God is completely separate from all that is unholy. Therefore, God invites all of us to be perfect and holy like Him. Remember, this invitation is a gift. Now, how do we act upon God's invitation? First, we transform ourselves into perfect human beings. We become perfect by practicing and imitating the loving qualities of God in our life. Second, we invite others to the love of God by reflecting God's love in our life, in our words and in our deeds. Finally, we transform the entire world into the kingdom of God by living like Jesus. Yes, God welcomes us to live in His love and liberty and to grow in perfection. This is simply called by the term vocation. My dear children, I'll give you examples of some great leaders who listen to the voice of God and respond. Abraham is the father of many nations, whose original name was Abraham. He was chosen to form a God-loving society. Abraham was born in a wealthy ancient city in Mesopotamia. The people there believed in many gods. They followed very strange custom of sacrificing their children to pagan gods. One day, Abraham's father, Terah, decided to move his family to a far-off country called Canaan. So they started their journey. But on the way, they stopped at Haran and decided to settle there. Years later, 
when abraham was 75 years old god revealed him and asked him to leave that place accordingly abraham left haran along with his wife sarai and his nephew lot abraham took all his riches with him and came to the land of canaan there abraham reached a place called shechem god appeared and promised to give that country to his descendants abraham believed god's promise and built an altar to give thanks giving to god god changed abraham's name to abraham which means father of many nations sarai's name was changed to sarah which means princess god gave them a son isaac one day god asked abraham to offer his son isaac as a sacrifice in the land of moriah abraham obeyed and started out for moriah on reaching the top of the mountain abraham built an altar and picked up his knife to kill his only son as a sacrifice god saw that abraham gave first place to god alone and abraham placed god above everything so god sent an angel to stop abraham from killing the child god promised him that he would make his descendants a great nation and people everywhere would be blessed because god blessed abraham's people my dear children the history of our salvation begins with the story of abraham well my dear children another history figure i'd like to share with you is moses God chose Moses to liberate Israelites from the slavery of Egypt and to take them back to the promised land of Canaan. Egypt was then a very, very powerful nation. The story begins like this. Once there happened a severe famine in the land of Canaan where Abraham's son, grandson Jacob and his family resides. Jacob is also called by the name Israel. Since Jacob's son Joseph was the governor of Egypt, Jacob and his whole family migrated to Egypt and settled there. His family comprised of some 70 members. Years passed by and Israelites grew in number. Now, Egyptians they were afraid of Israelites' steadily growing population. hence they made them their slaves and tortured them israelites cried out for god's help and god heard their cry one day an angel appeared to an 8 year old man named moses in a flame coming from the middle of a bush God called Moses out of the bush and revealed him his name as Yahweh which means I am who I am God assigned Moses the mission to release Israelites out of the bondage of Egypt Through Moses God performed great wonders and miracles and liberated Israelites from the slavery of Egypt They started their exodus to the promised land of Canaan through the desert. 3 months later when they camped at Mount Sinai, God made a covenant that means an agreement with Israelites. God gave them 10 commandments which Israelites had to keep. In return, God promised that Israelites would be his special people. Thus Moses lived as per his vocation and led Israelites till they reached the edge of the promised land. Now, from the Old Testament Bible, let us also take an example of a boy whose name was Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah was only a boy when he received God's invitation. This shows that God's invitation is irrespective of the age of the people. Those days many Israelites believed that since God protects the temple of Jerusalem, living in the holy city was safe. They were so sure that God would not allow the place of Jerusalem temple to fall into the hands of its enemies. But God revealed to Jeremiah that living in the holy city was not enough. Instead, living holy lives was what God wanted. Therefore, God called Jeremiah to demolish all the devilish deeds and behaviors of the people. Jeremiah kept on giving God's messages to the people, but people ignored all his warnings. Finally, God's warnings came true. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia took over Jerusalem. Israelites were taken as captives to Babylon. However, God revealed to Jeremiah that a time was coming when God would restore his people. Now my dear children, in the New Testament we see how Jesus calls Peter who was just an ordinary fisherman by profession. Those days Jewish teachers chose only special and intelligent people as their disciples. But Peter was called to catch human beings for the kingdom of God. Jesus also had many other disciples, but they were all ordinary people with ordinary jobs. Yes, of course, there were some brilliant people like Saul, who later became Saint Paul. We will learn more about them in later chapters. Now, my dear children, all these examples give us some insight about certain criteria by which God calls people for his mission. We can summarize what we learned so far like this. God calls those whom He wants. It's a call to be with God. God's invitation is for building up of the kingdom of God on earth. The building up includes preaching the kingdom of God all over the world. Vocation is a gift of God. The mission has to be accomplished faithfully and responsibly. What matters is God's love for people and not the greatness of the chosen one. Let's all pause for a while and pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious call, which is a gift for all of us. Father, we thank you for inviting us to be at your service for building up your kingdom on earth. Lord, grant us courage and strength to accomplish the mission assigned to each one of us. We ask this in the sweet name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My dear children, God bless you. See you next Sunday. Till then, bye.